In this episode, we clean and weigh big piles of gold to see if we're getting any closer to paying off our $125,000 preseason investment. Freaking out! But first, a surprise storm has come up on the Bering Sea, and the only dredge out being tossed by the waves is our dredge, currently unmanned, which means the boys have to get up to attempt a dangerous rescue on the high seas. I mean, I woke up at five this morning for uh, Ross and I were gonna go out and work. We left the boat out overnight, and we goes, um, honey, uh, it's been blowing a little bit. And we looked at the weather, and it's been blowing like 10 to 20 out of the south for the last like three hours. So we gotta go do a dredge rescue right now. You leave the boat out overnight, the forecast says it's nice, and then the weather changes on you while you're asleep, you wake up and it's a bad situation. So that's kind of what we're walking into right now. We've got me, Dan, and Ross, one measly cup of coffee between the three of us, and uh, we gotta go get the dredge out. It is 5.30 a.m., June 26th. We're supposed to have a stretch of clean weather. Instead, we're doing a dredge rescue. We're just gonna run out there in the little skiff. We're not sure how we're gonna get onto the boat if the waves are, have gotten big yet. Yeah, All the other dredges draw. are in the harbor. Probably the only ones that are still ever dredge out there. Said it was blowing 17. These are at least three feet. We've got a couple out over four, I think. You're like, you know, like lose the dredge over in and it's come down hard on the other side. Good time to get out of here, huh? There you go, that's a nice one. Yeah. We have it hooked during the storm. The suction nozzle came unhooked and was down that direction. So rather than dive down and hook onto it, we're gonna whip up a lasso. We're gonna lasso it around the hose and then tighten it up and we'll pull it back. If we can get just one of these hand winches on it, then we can get the next one and the next one and the next one. So. Yeah. Oh, there's some good ones coming. That's a good one right there. Hang on, Alex. Are both diver bags still on there? Yeah. yeah. Now that we've rescued the hose, we need to pull up these anchors as fast as we can before the storm really picks up. Right, we're gonna try to back the boat into this one so we're not side seas to this swell. Alex, you let off on the uh, starboard bow.
we got one last anchor coming up. We're basically we're about to head back, but our main risk right now, right now, is this skiff. The way that this skiff is banging around, it's likely to break a cleat. We've already broken two cleats. We're taking water actually, so. I'm gonna jump in the skiff, you guys cut the lines, and then I'll, I'll just motor back. I'll follow you guys home. I don't wanna get in there any sooner than I have to. <laughs> or I can get in too, but. Man, nah, I want to stay with the big boat. It's kinda like. A baby? Your yeah. responsibility. If the skiff goes down, it's not as bad. I just want you to pick me up. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to do this. All right, see ya. Let's, let's roll, head, eh? Let's head back to land. We expected to be mining gold on calm waters today, but we got a surprise storm. Leaving the boat out overnight is always a calculated risk. You check the forecast, you hope and pray for the best, but sometimes you have a dredge rescue at 5 a.m. when a storm descends unexpectedly on the Bering Sea. We are motoring out to hopefully a good spot. We rescued the dredge yesterday and we're, we kind of came down here early. We're trying to get out here and maybe try and beat some folks out. The visibility might be bad. We don't know. As long as the biz is good, we're really hoping for two full dive ships. That's kind of that's kind of what we want. Box has been looking good. Like we've been on good stuff. We just uh, we just kind of need to fight through some of these weather windows and keep moving. Normally, you can't see anything underwater after a storm, but today, the visibility is perfect. It's time to make some money. Ross is diving. We just saw this log, it's right next to us. I think we should bring Ross up. Okay. That's yeah. a little dangerous, so yeah, have him come up. Hey Ross, why don't you come up? Oh, this is a good one. I got it going, I got it going. I gotta move. I should have been a logger. Get out of here, log. You ain't welcome here. Call that a log? I use those for toothpicks. What sort of operation is this? Sorry I yelled at you. Do you yell? No. It's important to bring divers up when there are hazards like that in the water. If the log snagged as umbilical, Ross could have been dragged 50 yards from the boat before we could do anything about it. With the unusual amount of driftwood floating by, Alex and Dan are going to have to be on high alert while they live in Nome's National Forest. What you got there, babe? Uh, I got a stick fish. <laughs> I just caught it. What's going on with all these logs? I don't know, it's like uh, log invasion 2023, it's crazy. We're, we're on log watch right now. Log watch. Keeping the diver safe with this log stain. The log stain. You're the log stain. <laughs>
a kind of like a boulder field. And we've been kind of clearing out the sand. So if I switch sides, I, I moved from one side of the field to the other. Start working that on the other edge. And honestly, it just kind of started getting into deeper and deeper sand. Finding gold is part luck, part skill, part science. You have to use a little bit of wisdom from experience, but like you also just kind of have to get lucky too. But this time, it's definitely not been a total flop. We just like we're getting paid, and I'm trying to make up some some ground here because I'm definitely in some stuff that I think is worth our time. You got to work for it, and when you're only down for five hours, you know you can't really mess about. You kind of got to make it happen. So I'm doing the best I can here. While well, Alex and Ross are out diving, it's time to finish panning and weigh the gold from the last box. I can't dive, so I'm just like uh, making good use of my time by panning out. Panning out all the stuff. And the panning's going great. Our gold is really, really piling up. Ooh, yeah, look at that one. This hey. one is extremely heavy. Oh, I mean, look at that. That is a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's the number one. We're number one. We're gonna do... 6.24. 6.24 ounces. Yeah. First hey, way. That's, that's good. Number two. Just be above two. Ooh. Be above two and a half. Oh yeah, no, we're doing How'd good. How'd we do? How'd we do? Four point hey. seven eight seven nine Or eight, depending on what way the wind is blowing, literally. This is really crazy. 4.28. 4 4.28. 4.28. 4.3. 4.3. Dun, 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 dun. dun How much dun, did we do? Dun. Oh gosh, I want it to be more than 12. It's going to be more than 12. Oh yeah. 14.8. 14.8. 14.8. Sweet. We're going to get the total and then Yay. we're going to send it to Alex out on the boat. What is 6.8? 24 plus 4.79 plus 4.28 plus 4.3 plus 14.8. Gosh, nerd. It's faster. Okay. 34. 34. Oh, hey. 34.41. That Yay. is really good. Where's that marker? 34.41. 34 ounces. Yeah. 0.87 per hour. Yeah. That's our goal. Bro, that's gold per hour. That's. That's better than That's three almost quarters. an hour. Oh my gosh. Yeah, baby. We killed it. Freaking out. Yeah. That is incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, we're being quiet because the, the baby's sleeping over here. The but, baby's um, asleep upstairs. We don't want to wake her up. Oh, that's fantastic. We are excited. Killer gold. Oh my Killer gosh. Gold. Almost an ounce per hour. Hey guys, I'm outside 49th State. Uh, we're getting our last meal before getting on a plane to start our preseason in Nome. But just want to remind you that you can get all the gold you're seeing at BearingSeaCrater.com from Arts Loose Box to your mailbox. So check it out. Cheers. So on our last cleanup, we did 34 ounces. 39. Yeah, we killed it. We did almost 0.9 an hour. Yeah, it does. Our last way out, we had just over half an ounce an hour. And this is a big difference. A lot of money, big deal. This whole spot that we've been dredging, it all came from David's last dive, which was over one ounce an hour. David's parting gift. So, thank you, David. Dude, we were on it. We gotta go back, I think, to where we were before and probably go suck some sand up or something. Like, you know, Ross and I are on this spot. We kind of like it, we kind of don't. But where we were before, we saw great gold, but then we would hit these sandbars and we're like, it's kind of deep, you can't really see the gold. I don't know if it's worth it, but dude, 0.87 an hour, it's most definitely worth it. I think we should probably go back there and, and work that sand. All right, how'd it go? Tough dive, yeah, it's, spotty gold. It started out a little, little patchy but I found a good spot at the end and I worked it. I worked it real hard. It was pretty thin, 
as far as like the overburden, there was pretty reasonably good gold. Yeah, there's definitely chunky gold here. Who knows, maybe we did better than we think. Bro, this doesn't look half bad at all. Let's step back. Yeah, the weather says it might be okay overnight, but I don't know. There's a lot of dark clouds and western wind, and I don't trust the weather app these days. They've been uh, really wrong, hence our dredge rescue the other day. So we're a little gun shy. We're gonna pick up and go back to the harbor where we know it's safe. Come back out tomorrow if it's still good. Next episode, we get our hot mining spot stolen by another dredge. And we notice a critical failure in our suction system that could be dumping hard earned gold back into the ocean. But when the weather's good, we can't stop mining for anything. Click the top video to go on to the next week's episode or click the bottom to go back to the beginning.